And we need to get that into our spirit. Is there something in somebody's life, someone's well-being, hinge on whether I pray or not? Whether I get a hold to God or not? Whether I lift them up to God or not? America today, America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, and yet this country that was founded on Christian values and principles have turned away from the Lord at such a large scale. So what can the church do? What can we do? It's not so important about what someone is doing down the road. What are we doing? 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 Do I really care? God has called us to be an assessor. As God was touching my heart with this message, I believe the Lord spoke to my heart and told me that He's calling the intercessors to the front line. Come on. Come on. Anytime you hit the front line, honey, you're on fighting ground. You're in a battle zone. But that's where the battles are won and lost. And He's putting us on the front lines. There always has been and there always will be a penalty to sin. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, there is a penalty for sin. And wages is something that you work for. Wages is something that you deserve. But a gift is something that's given to you. It's freely given. You didn't have to work for it. And so what God is saying here is, Ezekiel 22, verses 30 and 31, the King James Version says, I saw for a man among them that should make up the hedge, stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found none. The Living Bible says it like this, I looked in vain for anyone who would build again the walls of righteousness. That would build again the walls of righteousness that guard the land who could stand in the gap and defend you for my just attacks. But I found not one. And so the Lord God says, I will pour out my anger upon you. I will consume you with the fire of my wrath. I, I have heaped upon you the full penalty for your sins. <coughs> the international version says, so I would not have to destroy it. But I found none. All through the Word of God, we see people that interceded in behalf of others. They themselves were not guilty. They themselves were not Sin, stain. Even Jesus, the sinless one, interceded in our behalf. Right. All through the Word of God and even down through church history, people that would stand in the gap and make up the hedge, people that they would go to bat for someone who did not deserve it at all. Oh. You and I are going to have to be that people. That's right, man. That stand in the gap and make up the hedge. Ooh, I feel the touch of God. Mm. We are going to have to be that people that squares our shoulder and grabs a hold of the horns of the altar and say, God, my family's dying and going to a devil's hell, but I'm going to do something about it. Come on. That he has given us power over all the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. You cannot make people do, but you can pray at those influences that are on their life. That it's like claws dug into them will have to begin to release. Hallelujah. Because you have got power in the name of Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. And that's what we're doing on this corner. We can't ever forget. 
in our purpose. Why God has placed us here. In number 16 and 48. I read this and something went all over me. Because Moses. As he had been leading the children of Israel out of Egypt bondage. And they come to this place. And we read in Numbers chapter 16 that they had sinned against God. And that there was those that had raised up against the man of God and against the will and plan of God. And God opened up the earth and swallowed them. And then the earth closed up on them like closing her mouth. Fire come down from heaven and begin to consume them. And then there was the plague that hit. And the oh, mercy! Yes, there is. 
experience it. Because sometimes, you see, it'll cost you to pray. Anybody that ever told you it's not worth to pray, they've never prayed. Anyone that'll tell you it's not a sacrifice to pray, they don't know what they're talking about. Sometimes we got to do more than just speak some words. Sometimes words don't even come. Sometimes if we were dependent on people to understand us in order for our prayers to be answered, it would be impossible because sometimes all we can do is cry. Sometimes all we can do is moan. Sometimes all we can do is say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. But I want you to know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just 
kind of clicked in my spirit. And I thought, if we don't pray for our families who are our own flesh. Amen. Then he said, Thy light shall break forth as the morning. Thy hell shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rear reward. Thou shalt cry or call, and the Lord shall answer thou. Woo, I love this. And you know what he says? Here I am. i, I got to read that again. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer thee. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Here I am. If thou shalt take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking vanity. I've got to stop here. Know what that Yeah. Putting forth of the finger. Huh? Sometimes we need to realize there's a thumb connected to that thing. Amen. Here am I. And if thou shalt draw up thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shalt thy light rise in obscurity. I've said this for years and I believe it with all my heart and I'm going to reiterate it right now. I believe that God is going to start raising people up out of obscurity. I believe He's going to start setting people in positions where their daddy and granddaddy wasn't preachers in the past, was not connected in some high up official place uh -huh. that God is going to say, because this person has been faithful to me, because this person has walked in my ways, I'm going to raise them up. They may be in a dark place, but I'm going to have to shine the light on them. I'm going to have to lift them uh -huh. into a place that I can use them for my glory, and I will get all the glory. Amen. Amen. Then shalt thou light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy bones, and thou shalt be like a well-watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. Come on. Okay, i got to stop there, too. Years ago, God showed me a river. I seen it in the spirit. It started out small and there were big places as it began to course that it would get bigger and then it would get smaller. And then at one place it was very narrow. And then it expanded and it just turned and twisted. And it, and it finally it came to a huge, huge waterfall. And began to just pour and pour and pour. And God let me know that this is the course of my life. The times that His blessings were so bountiful. And the times when the river narrowed and I had to totally, totally depend on Amen. And then as I walked into those places, and he would just open it up. We had started evangelizing full time, and we were off in a revival, and Brother Dole and I both got sick. It was so bad that we had to cancel revival and go home. We were both in the van. Our neighbor has done gone on to be with the Lord now, big and lot. He would <clears throat> get wood, put it on our door, our porch by our door, so that Noel didn't have to go out and get wood. And we'd have it close so we could keep the fire going. I began to get better, and Noel was still sick. <clears throat> and my daddy got real bad. And my mama called me one day and she said, your daddy wanted me to call you to have you to pray for him. He's hurting real bad. I said, well, I'm going to get off the phone. I'm going to pray. 
and then I'll call you right back. I got on my knees, I began to cry out to God, and I got a peace. I felt assured that he was better. So I called her back, and she said, yeah, he's not hurt, he's better. See, I was going to go over there, but it was cold, and it was rainy, and it was windy, and it was bad, and Doyle was sick, and I wasn't feeling good. So I decided to wait till the next day. And I heard in the background my daddy say, Tell my little Lenny that I love her. Oh. The next morning we got a call. They just taken me to the hospital in the ambulance. Brother Jerry, you were in that ambulance. I knew I didn't have to go to the hospital. So I come on over to the apartment. And at that point, my daddy had gone to heaven. And uh, we were going to make up money to help put him away. I didn't have nothing to give. I didn't have nothing to give. And I bawled so much until my eyes were swollen together. My daddy, my husband, that night pulled me up close to him and he said, that's all right. He said, because you were preaching when your daddy got saved. I don't know why I'm telling you that. But our finances had got down to zero and past zero. If our bills would have come due right then, it would have been minus. But it was at that point when that river got so narrow. The people would come up to me and they'd hug me and put a piece of money in my hand. Someone else would pull me up, hug me, put a piece of money in my hand. They didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. But they were fulfilling God's word to me. Hallelujah. And so we was back out on the road again, traveling, preaching, and all of those things. And God spoke to me and he said, there will always be from that point, that that point, that's why so much of it is so significant. He spoke to me and he said, from this point where that river was so small, he said, there is always going to be an excess. Oh. Always from this point on, you'll never be broke again, is what he was saying. He didn't say it that way. But he said, there will never be a lack. There would always be a surplus. And it's always been. It doesn't matter how, how it's got. Somehow I've always had something in my hand. Why? Because God said it. Amen. God said it. What are you saying, Sister Linda? How did you come all the way around? Just tell us this. I'm telling you this, that you will never begin to walk in the ways and the promises of God, that God will not do it just like that scripture. When you obey God, and just like he said, when you do what you're supposed to do, he said, Shave 
and not my sight. Oh. And sometimes when we're in that tight place, we forget what God told us. God's told us some things about this corner. He's told us some things about what He expects of us and what we've got to do. And we can't forget it. We've got to be obedient. Right. Okay. And they shall be called, those that obey God, and they that shall be of thee shall be on the waste places. Those that shall be of you. What in the world is that talking about? That's your kids. That's those that's coming up behind you. Amen. What you go through is not just going to help you, it's going to help them. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repair of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Doing His will and not our will. To delight ourselves in the Lord. And He'll cause us to ride upon the high places of the earth. In other words, God's got favor for you. We can't give up. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7, the living Bible says, O Jerusalem, I have set intercessors on your wall who shall cry to God all day and all night for the fulfillment of His promises. Take no rest, all you who pray, and give God no rest until He establishes Jerusalem and makes her respected and admired throughout the earth. King James calls the watchers, the watchmen on the wall. That's what we are. Just recently we went to Lady's Retreat and there was a prophetic word spoken over myself and over this church. Sister Jamie Massey said, and I won't, I won't pour all of it just right, but <laughs> she said, it's going to be like an army. And uh, I'd already had that spoken over me before her, and then Brother Stan spoke it there in the office before he left revival that Sunday a couple of weeks ago. And uh, she started laughing. She said, the only way that I can describe this, she said, and I don't mean nothing bad about it, she said, but when David was in exile in the army that came to him, she said, they wasn't a trained army. They were just people that, you know, stepped up. She said, ragtag army. <laughs> and she said, people are going to look and they're going to say, you did it. This with that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You did this with that? Yeah. You know why? Because God's going to get the glory. Hallelujah.
Our greatest need is not stuff. Our greatest need is our families to be saved, set free, delivered. Some years ago, we were at a camp meeting service and the night speaker told us to put our hands, to cover our hands in front of us. So everybody held their hand out and cupped their hand in front of them. He said, now I want you to see your family in your hands. And he said, every day, bring your family into the throne room of God. Begin to call upon the Lord in their behalf. Listen, church. They don't have access, but we do. Amen. If they're lost, but you and I have access into the Father. So let us do that. Let us claim. Don't give up on our loved ones, but let us claim Acts 16.31. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I was looking back over some notes, and in 1998, God spoke this to me, <clears throat> and I feel like I need to share it with you today. In 1998, He said, "My daughter, I'm searching. I'm searching." I'm looking for those that will put their pride aside and follow me. Those that will become unattached to the things of this world that have them weighted down. Every time I call them to do a work for me, they pull and pull. They try, but they fall because they are entangled with the cares of this life. Their eyes see no farther than their desire and their desires are carnal. I'm searching for a people that will fulfill the work I long to do in this last days. And I am finding them. Did you hear that? Amen. And I am finding them, many in places that would not expect to find a treasure, but I know where to look. I will not receive lip service. I must and I will have people that will follow me with their whole heart. The hour is late and the time is at hand. Call my people to a solemn assembly. Let them cry unto me with all their hearts and I will be entreated of them. I will hear and I will answer and I will bring healing to their land, which is their homes and their lives. I will bring joy out of the ashes of sorrow and pain. I will accomplish what I set out to do. None shall stay my power and what I purpose to do. But I am searching for these that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap. And then he asked me a personal question. He said, will you be one of those that I will raise up? Will you sound the alarm? Will you sound the trumpet of the gospel loud and long? Will you call my people to repentance? Will you serve me with all your heart? I asked you a question. What will be your reply? And what will be the reply of my people? Would you stand across the building? <coughs> Ezekiel 22, 30 and 31. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. That's your family, my family, so that it would not be destroyed, but I found none. That cannot be said about us, church. I read in the scripture, I believe it was Psalms 89. The scripture said, I have found David. And I thought, God, if you're looking for someone, you found David, find me. Here I am, Lord. Bring me to that place of your purpose.
Bring me to that place of your promise. Can we have some music, please? <clears throat> God has got a plan for your life. God's got a purpose for your life. So you've got to step into it. He's not going to drag you into it. He's not going to force you into it. He's not going to pop that whip and make you do it. But if you will hear that voice, that still, small voice, and you'll say, here am I, send me. He may be just wanting to send you across the street. He may just be wanting to send you to your knees. He may just be wanting to send you to your prayer closet. Here am I. Send me. We need a revival of the will of God in our life. And we come to the place to where we say, not my will, but thine be done. And we're ready and willing. Those things that He put in our spirit that we pushed back on the back burner, we need to pull them up and turn up the flame. People are dying. People are lost. And God's depending on you. Every head bowed. The church pray.